Hello and welcome to the show. Now, the Terradain Gurkha is designed to survive many things, from crashes to bullets to probably some explosions and so on. It is an incredibly strong vehicle. However, it is not exactly fast. While it does have 300 horsepower and 650 foot-pounds of torque, it also weighs 16,500 pounds. That's um, over 7.5 tonnes. That is an awful lot of weight to, <laughs> to lug around, and it was never really designed to be a racing vehicle. So, what do we want to do with it? Well, get a lobby full of them and go racing. Uh, we decided to take them to Hockenheim, the Hockenheim short circuit first of all. You will notice that quite a few vehicles struggle to get off the line. You can tell who is running manual with clutch here as these do not launch, much like we saw with the, the Indy cars and some of the LMP cars, specifically the Audi. Yeah, these, these do not launch, but there is a much bigger problem with these, a problem that we didn't quite realise. They have got tremendous oversteer, as we see <laughs> through turn one. Nobody was quite expecting the complete and utter lack of, uh, of rear grip. You, you, you turn in, there's good turning grip, and the back end just lets go. Through turn two, about 50% of the cars spun, and the other 50% that didn't spin crashed into those that did spin. Yeah, I may have made a mess of things as well. You see, I went backwards through there. Uh, for, for a first lap, things did not quite go to, to plan. I mean, we thought these were going to be difficult to drive uh, because, well, there's a, there's a lot of weight uh, and so on. Didn't quite realise that the way they were going to be difficult to drive was that the back end would just randomly let go on you. It was a little bit of a pain to get used to, and certainly on this uh, these opening couple of laps, yeah, there were lots of sideways, lots of sideways Gurkhas. You see a blue one sl slide through camera shot. A lot of a lot of what was ending up happening is kind of just a case of try frantically to avoid the vehicles uh, in front of you when they lost control. But still, everybody was trying to go too wide. This is what happens when you put a bunch of racing drivers in, in silly vehicles. But still, despite not quite knowing what to expect from them, quite what they can do, it's still fight too wide for every single position possible. It comes into the hairpin. They're trying to fit four Gurkhas into the same piece of corner. Admittedly, one of them ended up out on the sand. Everything else kind of, sort of made it through. At this stage, there was a little bit of making up of your own track uh, to try and avoid some of the collisions. I think when the, when the car suddenly snaps, so it's four, we've never got four cars wide through there. Admittedly, the blue truck was on the grass uh, for a while trying to avoid the accidents at the hairpin. But uh, yeah, there was kind of a case of you were having to take avoiding action. Uh, if the car, let's say, on the inside of you started to get some oversteer, you have to kind of frantically try and avoid them. And the problem is, when you try to avoid, if you try to do anything frantically with these, you just get oversteer yourself and then you'd fall off the course as well. The kind of the balance between, or sort of with the vehicles was quite difficult to get used to. So as I said, the turning wasn't terrible on these. They actually had some decent, decent turning grip, and that was part of the problem with getting this turn one right. It kind of felt like you could take some decent speed through turn one. The problem was, is the second that you, you turned in, the back end and wanted to let go, we see the police, the police liveried one that hit the curb on the outside. That flicks it sideways massively. Yeah, they were they were a little bit of a, a, an awkward thing to uh, to get used to, as this uh, the grey truck tried to go around the outside of the blue Gurkha, couldn't make that one stick, just ran out of grip out there. The white truck also had an off. Uh, but by the second lap, we had started to get the hang of uh, of these vehicles. Turn one was still being a little bit of a pain, especially when there was a big kerb on the inside, that if you hit that, you were going to be going sideways, and then that's going to cause you problems uh, as well. Yeah, we were still having a few issues getting it sorted out for uh, for turn one. Part of the reason I picked Hockenheim is there's plenty of runoff areas for when things did go a little bit uh, a little bit wrong. And I was really in the mix of mix of things further back after a terrible start. I started well down the order anyway. My spin on the first lap hadn't helped matters. But you can see, despite all of the difficulties with driving these vehicles, look how close it is <laughs> between all of us. It, it's, it's too wide there, too wide there. I'm right behind the, the cars ahead. Unfortunately, there was a lagged out Gurkha, and uh, they still kind of hang around on the replays, which is a little bit odd, but there we go. I mean, this is, uh, they were racing as close as touring cars, quite frankly, and these are massive armoured cars that we were racing as close as you would, or probably closer than you would, with the likes of touring cars and so on. I went a little bit cautious this lap round. There's one Gurkha that made up about four positions through there. Managed to break later, dived up the inside, me got past, 
and was now fighting with the truck ahead. Pushed that truck out a, a little bit wide. One of the trucks went really wide, probably got a weird on the sand, so it was slow through that section. Now we're going up towards the hairpin, and again, we're all fighting for position. I had to try and be brave on the outside. Truck on the inside hits the curb, gets a huge slide. Kind of gives my vehicle a bit of a slap. But the thing with these is that um, if you do have collisions like that, nothing really bad happened. I mean, we had simulation damage on. Nothing's getting damaged here, as it's just so many trucks in into one space of road here. It's just, it's a ridiculous number of vehicles. Uh, trying to fit through here. I was having to take avoiding action of the vehicles behind the cars ahead were having oversteery issues. Uh, the vehicle that was leading this group got a big slide on as someone tried to go around the outside of him that uh, ended up settling that truck on the grass. Yeah, I, I got to the head of this group. But the, the thing with the collisions is because these were so heavy, if you got hit by something, you didn't get pinged off into the scenery. You kind of just sort of stayed there. So, yeah, sort of the odd bump here and there didn't really affect the trucks too much. At the front, it was the Punisher truck that was leading the way after the grey vehicle had made a bit of a mistake and dropped back to second. Actual sort of normal sensible overtaking is quite difficult with these. As you would, whenever we race single make cars, when everybody's in exactly the same vehicle, overtaking is pretty damn difficult because there's no performance advantage in any area of the track. It is made somewhat easier though when the vehicle in front of you makes a mistake. Punisher truck gets lifted up on two or probably onto three wheels around the second to last corner. I'm not sure if I lifted, lifted the back wheels up. And and uh, that was all it took to unsettle the car and put it round in a circle. Yeah, you, you do not want to get these things on the curbs at Hockenheim. The curbs are vicious. I mean, you see the rusted truck that came past there hit the curb ever so slightly on the inside of the final corner. And that's one of the nicer curbs here. And that was enough to start putting in sideways. So, yeah, the curbs were vicious. Were really vicious to, uh, to these vehicles. While I was continuing to make my way through the field, I had to go for one of my... This is perhaps one of my most spectacular overtakes I've ever done with a car. This is around the outside of one of the fastest, one of the hardest corners on this Hockenheim layout. Now, that is a tough manoeuvre to do with a car. A very tough manoeuvre to do with a car, let alone <laughs> with these things that want to slide. It was all the way around the outside. Puts me on the inside for the hairpin. I was fighting, fighting. It's, it's wanting to go sideways. The police vehicle is trying to get, get the cutback, get to the inside. I leave them space as we go through this uh, this chicane the, the trick with these vehicles you have to be so so smooth you have to be really super smooth because if you were too aggressive with the steering it would just spin the truck and the problem is you can see both of us there were trying to be as smooth as we could and then you don't do you don't sort of turn enough into the corner and then you end up running a little bit wide wide as uh, as we did yeah, it was a real balancing act getting these things quickly around a track they were good fun to race and as you saw there was plenty plenty of close racing and lots of overtaking in armoured cars. At the front, it was the Grey Gurkha that after inheriting the lead uh, would go on to take a relatively comfortable victory. Uh, it certainly helps if you can start near the front and especially if you survived the uh, the second corner mayhem. It uh, yeah, certainly helps you could escape away at the front. I mean, a lot of these a lot of these trucks, we were setting similar lap times between all of us. But uh, yeah, if you could get out of the battles and running clean air, it was certainly quite useful. I mean, you can see second, third and fourth there uh, in, in the background. It definitely, if you could, if you could get out of the chaos, it uh, it, it would help you no end. This was uh, the battle for fifth. While those guys there did vanish up the road a little bit from us as we all got scrapping amongst ourselves, I was trying to uh, do a bit of recovery drive and hopefully could find my way to fifth. And guess what maneuver I had to try and attempt yet again as we come around the same corner. Not quite as far alongside as I was the previous uh, the previous time around I did this, but I was far enough. I could just get my nose so that the blue Gurkha couldn't come across and close the gap. Both of us outbraked ourselves into the hairpin, although <laughs> with the blue car stuck on the outside, he was in the grass long before uh, before me. So I'd managed to get my uh, my fifth position as the vehicles behind were, were now fighting. The blue Gurkha would drop uh, another position. Unfortunately for me, though, I found out how nasty the curves can be at the second to last corner. I hit them. It doesn't actually lift the truck up. It's just enough to send it sideways. And then I hit the outside curb, and that's it. It's gone. It, if the curb hadn't been there, I might have saved it from going around. Everybody else scrambled to try and avoid me. They did a really good job of uh, trying to get out of the way. I got my car going again quickly. I wasn't blocking the road. I could, I could get it started again. Unfortunately, uh, despite a quick J-turn that I was quite pleased with, uh, I would lose four places in that one. So my nice fifth became, yeah, not, not a nice position. I was down in ninth from, uh, from that one. But uh, yeah, it was a huge amount of fun 
at, uh, at Hockenheim. For our second race, again, we see the cars that with manual and clutch struggling to launch them. There was a technique that we learned if you tap the A button, or, or whatever your clutch button is, if you tap the clutch button a couple of times and then go, you get started as sensibly as, as the other cars. But at this stage, still some of us haven't quite got that, uh, quite got that, uh, that sorted. Uh, we were hoping for a slight bit calmer race, certainly after the first couple of laps of Hockenheim. Once we'd figured out quite how these things drove, uh, or how, the, how they drove in sort of a racing situation, uh, we were hoping that things would be a little bit calmer this time around. There was some bumping, you can see further back. There was, the, uh, was, was some bumping, but uh, we certainly didn't have the same chaos. We knew what to expect from these vehicles. We knew they were going to be sliding. We knew we had to be very, very smooth with the steering if we were going to get them around the track quickly. So, yeah, on this... On this opening uh, opening lap and opening few corners, far few ve vehicles fell off the road. A few did, a few had some off-track excursions, but on the most part, things were were much cleaner. Now, we are running the uh, alternate Lime Rock layout, so we have the two chicanes just to really, really test these, uh, these vehicles. They are quite narrow chicanes. They were very, very important to getting a decent lap uh, around this track. This group of cars, the, uh, the green Gurkha carries far too much speed on the way in, ends up out in the tyre bundle. Uh, while the police vehicle and the white car behind uh, carried a much better, much better line. Getting momentum through those chicanes and the run down towards the final corner was so, so important to this lap. I mean, you see here the police, police Gurkha went straight around the outside of the grey one there. The white, the white one was also getting a look up the inside. Getting that momentum out of the chicane for the run to the final corner was really, really important. While the police car couldn't quite do much about the vehicle ahead on that one, yeah, that was that was the, the most important, almost most important part of the course. At the front, the leader had made a mistake, dropped back to third, and the new truck that had inherited the lead very nearly had a big accident. He got it too too much speed on the way into the chicane, drifted up towards the tire bundle, he scraped it, slowed himself down, but got away without having a huge accident. In turn, that slowed down second, and it brought third and fourth right up into the battle. This is a four-way battle for the lead in Gurkhas, coming up towards a really tight chicane. It's watched the truck in third, though. He gets to the inside for the first part of the chicane. The leader runs too, too wide through the chicane. He's slow off the corner, and <laughs> the grey truck from, goes from third to well first in a matter of about two corners. Yeah, that's how you uh, you get the lead back. Just make the most. Again, it's just all about get that good run through the chicane. Don't carry too much speed on the way. It's so tempting to try to carry that speed. But uh, you just can't get away with it because the back of the truck will let go. And that's that big sliding through there will cause you all sorts of trouble. As uh, we found out later on when someone carried too much speed, bounced off the tyre bundle and ended up on his side. As everybody sort of scrambled to avoid him. And on the most part, everybody did pretty well actually of getting out of the way of that one. The grey truck at the back of this group here uh, had the best run, had the best line uh, through that chicane. And he could get to the inside. It was certainly the most popular overtaking spot. Getting that run out of the chicane and then up the inside into the final corner. The final corner was flat out and you could be flat out on the outside as well. Well, it was probably the safest of the overtaking spots, uh, in all honesty. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you were stuck on the outside, you were likely to struggle. Although that was not always the case. Uh, this group here were <laughs> eating viciously over whichever position it was. The truck on the inside turns in a little bit too soon. He hits the grass, hits the curb, gets slowed down. And two trucks, one of them very sideways with a wheel on the grass, try to keep it around the outside. And they do it successfully. If the truck on the inside, yeah, is a little bit slowed down, you can hold it around the outside. And that's an incredible job to keep both of the vehicles there around the outside. And the great truck has the momentum down the start finish line to get ahead by turn one, but runs in too deep into the first corner. He's fighting with the oversteer and he's overcooked it into turn one. He's going to lose both of the positions. And that's what happens when you push it too hard. The red truck then gets a slide through the latter half of turn one, and he tries to correct it, gets speared off the track uh, with that particular one. And the white truck comes out the best of the uh, of the lot of them. Yet pushing it too hard under brakes into that turn one could cause you all sorts of problems. It was really easy to uh, unsettle these vehicles. Uh, the, you could see the leaders were pretty close, and second place did exactly what we saw last time out. He pushed it too hard. Third place was doing the same thing as well, just trying to get it turned in and you don't have the grip to get it done. Uh, the grey truck we're following moved himself up to third, but tried to get on the power too soon. He was sliding on the exit, and now the Punisher truck is fighting back on the outside. I'm coming up to join in the battle as well, with, uh, with as soon as they start fighting like this, it doesn't take much for us to catch up. It's all of us, are <laughs> I'm millimetres away from the grass there, as we're all trying to get on that power as soon as possible, all trying to make up as much time as we can. I mean, the car behind me was was 
not far back either. I really thought that the Punisher truck was going to be able to get this done here. I don't know if he missed a gear. Whatever reason, he didn't quite have the speed down via the next section. And then this group continued. We continued to fight quite viciously. Up until the point second place bumped the tyre wall through the chicane and caused chaos. So he got stuck out on the uh, on the tyre bundle. And we, we, well, we were all just taking the corner normally. No one had anywhere to go. Uh, the rusted truck got a little bit caught up. A few vehicles further back as well got caught up. Problem is, if you hit that tyre bundle, like we saw the truck that rolled, there was a green truck also got stuck out there. Um, if you get stuck and you're not encroaching on the chicane, it's okay. But the way that the second place truck hit that chicane, he ended up having this sort of nose sticking out across the chicane almost on the track and yeah, it caused a lot of chaos for all of us to try and avoid. It worked out quite well for me as it put me up alongside the, uh, the black truck. This is fighting for second place as we come down towards turn one. Now I knew I'm not going around the outside. I'm never going to make it around the outside of this corner. What I was hoping to do was make the black truck go take a tighter line as possible and hope that he got oversteer on the way through this first corner. That's what I wanted him to do and I could cut back to the inside to try and get the position. Fortunately for him at least, he controlled it well enough I couldn't do anything. I knew I wasn't going around the outside. I gave it a go. I tried to force him into getting some oversteer to make that little bit of a mistake but uh, he simply didn't and I had a truck right behind me as well so I couldn't do anything too ridiculous on uh, on this particular lap. Yeah, Lime Rock had been a huge amount of fun. Again, it was a similar story. Uh, this uh, this truck, after making after well after having the lead, falling back to third, and then making that great double overtake to retake the lead again, uh, he would go off and pull a gap to the rest of us. We were just fighting too much. It was a similar story, you know. We were setting very similar lap times. Uh, and so, I mean, you can see uh, this is first to fifth on screen at the moment. There wasn't a huge gap, despite you know how much we were getting. Uh, fighting one another and we got caught up with the incident the chicane and so on uh, but yeah it was a thoroughly enjoyable race although admittedly first was uh, was relatively uh, safe and clear for our final race well, you can see that i'd managed to figure out how to get these things uh, off the line still a couple of people having issues but on the most part of yeah we kind of got the hang of launching them uh, properly but we decided that seeing as these were difficult enough to drive in the dry why don't we make it rain and see how uh, <laughs> <laughs> how give these a real challenge, see how much oversteer we can, uh, problems we can cause with these. Amazingly, the first, the, for the first run through uh, this opening corner, only a couple of cars ended up out wide. And this first corner was expected to be a real pain. It is a pretty damn quick corner, it's downhill, and of course being in the wet, likely to be lots of sliding through turn two as well. It was too wide, almost solidly, on this opening lap. <laughs> Quite incredible. One of the blue trucks ends up out wide uh, across the grass. He's trying to get back on the track safely. It's uh, incredibly hard to do, especially when you get do get stuck out on the grass because you just lose all of the grip. And we see the Punisher truck this time uh, gets, gets his sort of wheel stuck on the on the dirt, and you're just going to keep going that way. There is no grip whatsoever out there, so you have no other choice other than just really go with whatever the truck is uh, is doing. Yeah, making mistakes or not making mistakes was key. To, uh, to racing here. We come up towards the final turn. I mean, the Brands Hatch Indy circuit is a relatively straightforward circuit to uh, to learn. It's quite difficult to drive in these things. There's a lot of quite fast corners that the trucks are just constantly wanting to go sideways on. This white truck mm, forces his way up the inside. There was a space for a Gurkha, just about, on uh, <laughs> on that final corner. Again, I mean, you can get away with, with those kind of uh, little, uh, little bumps. It does not affect these vehicles in any way, shape or form. And now as we come down to turn one, for the first time at sort of full racing speed. This is where things were likely to get interesting. And sure enough, as you can imagine, nobody was quite sure what they were doing. I think the Grey Gurkha on the outside may have locked his brakes slightly. The white truck we're following hits the curb on the inside, and while it's not going to roll the vehicles, it will spin them around, and there's a number of pirouettes into the, uh, into the gravel at the front, and they were going too wide for the lead yet again. The vehicle on the inside here is not necessarily the best place to be on the inside, and sure enough, he clips the curb, and that sends the Gurkha sideways into the uh, into the back quarter of uh, this car that we are following at the moment. Yeah, being on the inside for that quarter is not necessarily helpful, because while well, yes, for that particular turn it's good, you get stuck on the outside for this next really long final turn. So while the second place car here was, he was just looking for any way he could get past, you just don't have the grip in these to go around the outside. You know, when you're in identical vehicles, you're not going to have that extra grip to go past them. But still, I mean, we're racing armoured cars here, and the race is very much touring car racing. It's just with seven and a half ton trucks. <laughs> it's really quite remarkable. As we come down turn one, he's trying to go around the outside of the first corner. <laughs> that is a very brave manoeuvre. It doesn't quite work. He was millimetres away from ending up in the gravel. Unfortunately for me, I, I was in the gravel. Uh, it's... Uh, at that first corner. That caused a few problems for me. It dropped me 
back down the order. I mean, you can see a few cars in the background as well were having issues. The big issue, a lot of the issues we were finding, not just out braking yourself, but if you slowed down enough and you hit the curb on the inside, that caused so many issues. That's where we saw a number of cars uh, going off there. It's not just people uh, out braking themselves. Yeah, I found myself in uh, sort of in the mix of things, was struggling a little bit with uh, getting the oversteer calmed down, although <laughs> Punisher truck was off again uh, to that same corner. You really couldn't afford to go exploring in the in the dirt too much around here. Again, I, I, I was pretty pleased with running with running Brands Hack. There was plenty of runoff area for if thing if things went a little bit wrong. You can see just all of us. The amount these trucks move across the road, certainly when it's raining, it's just they're constantly just these little slides all over the place that you've got to try and counter, you've got to try and react quickly to. But then you can't react too quickly to them because, as I said, you do anything too vigorous with steering, you're going to end up in a lot of problems and probably spin. There was plenty of racing throughout the field uh, as well. This was, again, over one of the lower positions. We've got, we've got a red truck trying to go around the outside of the final turn while the grey truck is massively sideways. I mean, the red truck does a really good job. He so nearly makes it stick. Unfortunately, he sticks a wheel or two on the sand and that just slows him down enough to uh, to keep or for the grey truck to keep his position. That uh, is a really brave manoeuvre to try around the outside of that uh, that final turn, especially in these conditions. Doesn't quite pay off there. Nearly, nearly a very impressive uh, overtake. Towards the front, this was uh, once again. I think I was embroiled in a battle for second place. As uh, yeah, the uh, the grey truck had fallen back to join in this little battle, and he got himself on two wheels through turn one. Had one wheel on the sand pulled him sideways. I had to frantically try and steer to avoid him and the blue truck behind us got the best run of the lot i was kind of stuck on the inside having had to slam on the brakes to avoid the uh, the vehicle ahead the blue gurk is all the way around the outside of druids that's uh, that's not an easy maneuver i didn't think he was going to hold that but he managed to make it stick and that puts him on the inside for the next turn however you have to take a very tight line i was trying to do uh, to do the cutback i do get back to the inside i don't remember there being a bump on that particular maneuver i don't think i hit the car to be fair as i said you know bumps with these it really makes so little difference between uh, between the cars i got my vehicle to the inside and i could get the position as we run in towards this final corner again you just see all the trucks sliding around and you see how much difference that was about two corners we were fighting. The white truck has caught right up to us, and we've all lost ground to the vehicle ahead. Two quarters of fighting, and that's how much time that uh, that you can lose when uh, when racing with exactly equal cars. The white Gurkha was trying to get himself to the inside of the final turn. Pretty good place to get overtakes done, actually. Can get a good run out of that final turn. However, the white vehicle was not quite quick enough and had to drop back into line. As uh, yeah, we continued. I mean, this is it's incredible racing for the sort of vehicles that uh, that these are, and how close everything was. Again, coming down turn one, leader hits the curb, unsettles the car slightly. You've really got to avoid that curb. The white Gurk has gone with uh, with the oversteer from the curb. I tried to go around the outside as I didn't want to end up on the puddle, and she just dipped a wheel on the sand. It wasn't enough to slow me down, but it tipped me sideways. I bumped the grey Gurk. The blue cars up the inside. The camera doesn't have a bloody clue what to do at this moment as I managed to find my way around the outside of two cars at Druids. That's not a manoeuvre I thought was going to work either, but I made it stick, and that puts me on the inside for the next quarter. The blue Gurkha just runs out of road on the outside there. Again, he put one wheel on, on the grass, and that was it. You've, you've lost control of it. You're not going to make the turn quickly anyway. You might get it stopped eventually, but uh, yeah, that put the blue car down. And uh, I got myself uh, the, uh, the position <laughs> further back as well. This group formed towards the end of the race. I was really glad to see how much ridiculously close racing we were getting from vehicles that really shouldn't be raced. This Jurassic World one hits the curb and gets a big slide going down the hill. One of the trucks with fantastic momentum tried to do exactly what I did, uh, go around the outside, but he, didn't, he got it a little bit more wrong with that wheel in the sand and couldn't get it stopped. There's a big dive from one of the grey Gurkhas, a little bit of a laggy bump on, uh, on that one. He, he can't hold it. He gets a slide. The Jurassic World one gets a slide and someone else is up the inside of all of them. Not quite three wide this time down here <laughs> someone's off exploring uh, on the grass it, it was just so much ridiculous racing with these things again another slightly lagged out red car uh, on this one Jurassic World's vehicles on the inside but um, I think he gets a bit of a slide mid corner that slows him down and the grey car goes around the outside that was uh, again there's been lots of impressive around the outside manoeuvres that I never thought would be working but if the truck on the inside is just that little bit slowed down by getting some oversteer you could pull off some really impressive passes with uh, with these cars all these vehicles in the rain 
At the front, though, it was, uh, again, another relatively straightforward, a relatively straightforward race. If you didn't make any mistakes and you could escape the battling field, uh, this, this guy went on to pull a pretty sizable gap. I'm pretty sure you can't even see us. But we were busy, <laughs> busy fighting three wide over that second place. Yeah, again, similar lap times from, from all of the fastest drivers. But uh, if you could get that clean air, if you could run well away from the battles and critically not make any mistakes, especially down into turn one, then, uh, yeah, you could pull, uh, pull a sizable lead. The Gurkhas were incredible fun to uh, to race i we thought they were likely to be a bit crazy a little bit silly i didn't quite expect there to be as much close racing these things were <laughs> ridiculous going two and three wide through corners that you wouldn't want to be going two and three wide with cars let alone with these it was yeah i was astounded just how much fun these things were to race so if you hadn't tried it already yeah go 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 get some friends and go racing with uh with, with these cars the the more the more gurkhas you have the crazier it is they are a bit difficult to drive you the, the oversteer takes a bit of time to get used to the, the way that they suddenly snap sideways. You've got to be very, very smooth driving these vehicles if you want to get any speed out of them. They are they are a bit little bit of a pain, as you might expect. Not really designed for racing, but when you do go racing with them, yeah, it certainly is a, a spectacle. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.